Okay, do you want to see one of the most satisfying things you can do as a Python programmer? Running your tests and seeing that sea of green, all tests passed. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to write and run tests in Python in a matter of minutes. So stick around, learn something, and thank you for watching. Okay, so before I walk through the basics of writing a test in Python, let's just quickly review the setup. So um, I've already written a function for us to test whether it works or not. And this function is very simple. It is defined as cube. So this is a mathematical term for multiplying a number by itself three times. So if you had two cubed, that is two times two times two equals eight. Now to write this function, I'll quickly walk through it. It is simply returning an input value of a multiplied by itself three times. Okay, once we have a function that we want to test, we can now go and write that. But before we do, we'll install one of the most common Python libraries for testing called PyTest. Now, how you do that, you can check out other videos, but I'll quickly show you here. It is pip install PyTest. You'll see mine comes up with requirement already satisfied, and that's because I already have it installed. If you didn't, it should hopefully show some installations and successfully um, install it for you. Now, now that that's out of the way, you can write a new test file. So it's common practice to keep your tests in a separate file to your actual functions, but it's common to give it the same name. Now there's also a bit of syntax to the note here is that any test file should be prefixed with test underscore and then your name of your file. Now the reasons for this can be a little bit sophisticated, but just know that this is how PyTest behind the scenes is able to discover which files your tests are written in because it is prefixed with test underscore. And a second bit of syntax is that, um, well, at least for me, I like to write the name of the file the same as what the functions sit in. So we've got our function of cube sat in some maths.py. So I'm going to call it test underscore some maths.py. Hopefully you can see why I do that. Now, the second bit of setup is that you need to define your test function. Well, you may create many, but we're going to do one today. And once again, that syntax comes into play here that you must prefix your tests with test underscore for the exact same reasons. And then it's, and then maybe give your test function name something that is intuitive. So we're testing the cube function. So I'm going to say test cube function is correct. Not the most meaningful, but okay, decent. And then I will say test that the uh, cube function returns the correct mathematical result. Cool. Now, when writing the actual body of a test, I personally like to think of it as four key steps. The first is define your inputs to the function that you want to test. Then you can define your expected result. So when you run the function that you're going to test, what do you expect the result to be? You can then run your function or run the function that you are testing. And then finally, you verify that the result of what you just ran is what you expected, okay? So to actually put that in code terms, we'll quickly do that. So input value of two, as I mentioned earlier, and my expected result, as we know, should be eight. And we'll run the function. So the important step here is this file knows nothing about the cube function at this point. It's sat in another file. So what we will do is say from some maths, which is basically referencing this Python file, we're going to import the cube function that is defined in that file. So now we can actually use that function in our, our 
script here, we're going to say that the result of running the cube function with the input value, so remember cube function here, we're giving it the input value of two and capturing the result. And then finally, we actually run our assertion. So this is a Python built-in function or keyword that returns true or false based on what you provide it that you are asserting. So we want to assert that the result of what we ran is equal to the expected result. We as the creators expect a result of eight. Is that result equal to that value? And that is simply it. That is a test function in its most basic form. So to actually test does that work or not, what we can actually do is jump over into our terminal or command line and run one command pytest. Now this is where the key stuff of prefixing your functions and your files with test underscore comes into play because behind the scenes pytest when we hit enter is going to search for that, find all the relevant tests, run them and return the result and it does it lightning fast. So you'll see here, I'll hit enter, boom, one passed in 0.01 second. And you know, it's rare to see that sea of green, but it's really nice when it does. Um, just to show you, um, you know, when it doesn't work, let's say our expected result was nine for whatever reason. I'll simply, I'll clear this, run it again. And you'll see here it's saying, I'm asserting that the result, which was eight, I thought it would be nine. And so it's, it's giving me a, a failed test uh, with, a, with a load of detail. And so this is the value of testing. It can, you, you may expect one thing and the result is something else. And you can find out instantly and programmatically rather than manually running tests and code in a notebook or in a script.